welcome to my voice, first voiceover. So here I'm sketching up the ibex. Uh, the book in the top corner is Terry Whitlatch's uh, Creatures Real and Imagined, which I'm using for reference for um, the skeletal structure. I'm actually looking at a picture of a canoe and how the, the bone structure is actually underneath the cloths and the cloths of the skin to build up the underlying structure of the ibex. Um, you'll notice in a moment that I'll start using a bit of transparent paper and that's to double check the length of the front leg that I've already drawn up the front to uh, um, put in the back leg at a better uh, angle. So here I'm just building up the, the rib cage, throwing in a couple of springs, a little bit of ornamentation, some curly cues, which as I was putting them in I realised that there's some historical bronzes of I think it's a stag that has something similar to that with the antlers curling down the back which probably unconsciously fed in there. Um, horns, and one of the reasons I've decided to do the ibex is for those fabulous great big curving horns and you'll notice I do have a tendency with the, the transparent paper uh, drafting film actually it's a, a heavier duty than tr uh, tracing paper actually is and means you can erase it and reuse it multiple times over. I do like my tassels. So you'll notice the candle off the on the right, that's a, also an eye, and the eye is for illumination. Um, you'll notice later I go through and put in lots of little floating flames as a design element in the background. Uh, for your colouring pleasure. Uh, so the pens I'm using here are my brand new Staedtlers that are replacing the last lot of well, Staedtlers also that I had that I basically drained dry doing the last, um, last picture, which was the November uh, calendar page, which had a lady in a kimono looking at a frog. The uh, curly cues in on the the shoulder blade of the ibex there were <clears throat> when even when you get to see the the colouring page, there are a curly cue kind of based on the shape of ink droplets being filled into water, not quite as symmetrical as um, the actual ones are. But here I'm putting in the, the second hind leg, trying to figure out a placement of the hip in behind everything else, which you'll notice I haven't actually finished doing. I got distracted by the horns got the horns done and then went back and reworked the, um, the placement of that hind leg. You'll see the, the tracing paper coming into play again in a moment as I just adjust and readjust the placement of the hip slightly. Great stuff tracing paper. You'll see on there the remnants of the, well there was the remnants of the bird on the screwdriver from my last video thing and that piece of paper I've been reusing since mid 2015 for small details. So it's good size. I just erase it back and reuse it, erase it back, reuse it. So at this point I've not actually finished finalising the content in the neck. Still thinking about that, I leave that to ferment and I go in and put in additional little details, erase off the um, a lot of the spare pencil that isn't necessary. I've tried to give at least 5-10 minutes for each of the ink lines to dry in an area before I do any erasing because I've found that the, um, the ink will lift off and go grey rather than stay black if it's erased too soon. It's really better to leave it for 24 hours, but um, an impatient creature. It's nice to be able to see something completed. And here I'm just putting the last of the flames, changing my music over, the occasional flicks across the keyboard for songs that don't interest me quite as much as they possibly uh, eh, should or could. Throwing in a couple of parallel-ish lines here for um, additional colouring interest. Just those last little tidy up lines and that's it pretty much done. And there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this time lapse. Until next time.